Hello all, it's Bertie here. Now, I'm running a bit short on ideas for projects. Uh, I need something big, something impressive, a sort of a milestone for the channel, as it were. But I have no ideas whatsoever what to do. Um, if only I had, say, bought a big piece of furniture recently that was really, really practical, but wasn't particularly pleasant to look at, you know, then maybe we could do some work to it. Ah, I need an idea. What are you doing on? Got nothing. So it's been a couple of hours since I filmed that uh, because it was sunny outside so we went to take the cat out for a walk in the communal garden. Maybe not all that much. <laughs> and then I spent two hours untangling this slinky that I found outside. That was fun. I've only ripped three of my cuticles. Okay, anyway, that's enough of that. Back to this. Uh, so I picked this up on Facebook Marketplace for 60 quid. It has a light, as you saw earlier, which is very handy. It's not the brightest thing, but it, it will be of some use. Um, but it's not particularly pretty. Um, a bit of grime on it there. Uh, so to tell you more about that, I shall hand over to Nurse, provider of sharp things from the previous video. If you don't know who she is, she is my wonderful partner, Lilani. So, shall we switch places? Let's go. All right. This baby can fit so many books in it, <laughs> but it's ugly. Um, and I don't like it because it doesn't fit the rest of our living room. Don't show them the living room, it's a mess. I won't show them the living room. Uh, what we are going to do is we're gonna sand all this stuff down because it has a, like a veneer on it, um, which will make it difficult to make paint stick. So we're gonna sand the whole thing down and I think we're going to go for a nice light sage green on the outside and um, a deep forest green on the inside. Yeah. So I love a bit of contrast. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll, gonna... we'll work really nicely with the little lamp as well. Yeah. Make it look all fancy. Like we have money. <laughs> um, <laughs> Had until we bought this. We are going to take these ugly handles off yeah. and replace them with less ugly handles. And we're also going to add a frame around each of the doors so that it adds a little bit of detail, a little bit of extra fans. Fans. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to paint a mural on each of these doors. Ooh. Which I'm very scared about because I haven't done a mural in a really long time and I'm not a particularly talented painter. That's alright, I have a YouTube channel, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> see how that goes um, with sanding first. Sanding first. So to make things easier I'm going to take the doors off the cabinet, take out all the tools and the other things I store in there. It is mostly tools um, and things that I've had difficulty finding places for otherwise but... Rude. Anyway, let's get those doors off and the handles. So we bought a sander specifically for this project. It has a little dust bag, which is great, but we don't know if it's any good yet, so we're just gonna try one of the doors um, in the studio, in Lani's studio, which is where we are at the moment. Uh, if the dust bag is okay, we'd rather not have to move the whole thing from next door and bring it in here, uh, so that's why we're gonna give it a test here. You're terrifying. Yeah, that's how I like to live. Right, let's get... So we've had some moderate success with the sanding. It's uh, it's looking pretty good. Um, it's it's a bit patchy 
We're not sure why, as far as we can tell, the sander sheet has been put on properly. Yeah, uh, and we're using equal pressure across the whole thing. Yeah. Um, so it might just be an experience. It might just be. My dad did tell us about this stuff that you can use as a primer for anything. He said even windows, you can put it, you can paint it onto glass and mm. then paint normally on glass. Uh, it's a bit expensive, but seeing as we have, well, quite a lot of, will it turn? No, I'm taking screenshots, that won't help. <laughs> I thought it was to flip the camera. Uh, there's quite a lot of bookshelf to, uh, sand. to sand. Plus, because we've got to do all the shelves, the shelves that are inside the cupboard, the cupboard doors, yeah. um, the back, the inside back of the wardrobe, and the wardrobe? wardrobe. The, I'm tired, man. The bookcase yeah. and the like top of the bookcase. Yeah. I do think that maybe, maybe splurging on a bit of that paint might save our hands. Yeah. This is a big project to sand. Yeah. I don't imagine this particular veneer was had sanding in mind. No. That might be why it's, it's not coming off so cleanly. It's just designed to be ugly forever, wasn't it? Yeah. What era do you think it is? I mean, looking at that light bulb and the light fixture, it looks like kind of thing you see at Granny's place. Mm. So, what, 80s maybe? 80s seems about right. 80s chipboard furniture from pre-IKEA days. It's very good quality though. Yeah, it's, it's very sturdy. Um, there's no flex in the shelves whatsoever. You could probably sit on them. Have a horse give birth on one of them and it'd be okay. That was a strange metaphor. It was really strange. I'm gonna stop this bit now. So it's been a couple of days since you last, since we last filmed anything, because I had to do real work, unfortunately, I had to do my real job, that earns real money. Anyway, um, there's been a bit of progress since last time. What we've done is we've put the, we've put some trim on the doors for the cabinet um, to uh, maintain the, the shape of the mural, as it were. Um, I'll, I'll get onto that in a minute. Um, and then we were going to apply the primer that we bought. Uh, you know, said the one you can apply to anything. This is a Zinsa best quality since 1849. That's not important. Bosa 123 Plus. And it's a uh, water based primer that sticks to most surfaces without sanding, um, which is pretty handy. If you buy this, you're going to need disposable paintbrushes because they, they won't survive this stuff. It's a liter of it, and it was 22 quid, so it's, it's a bit on the pricey end. But apparently it does the job really well. Um, of course, before we can prime it, we had to put the, uh, the lintel on it. I don't know if that's the right term, but we'll see. Um, so I, I kind of messed up with the first tool. Well, no, I didn't mess up, but I made it more difficult than it needed to be. The first piece of the trim I applied was the full width of the door. Seeing as the trim is 15 millimeters wide, I had to cut the right piece 15 millimeters shorter than the height of the door so it would fit properly. This meant that both the top and the left pieces had to be 15 millimeters shorter. Then I could either cut another 15 millimeters off one of the pieces so they would fit, or cut the joining ends at an angle. If I did cut one of the pieces by 30 millimeters, the cut would have had to be very precise to fit nicely. Instead, I cut angles on both pieces to allow them to fit more easily. On the second door, I made life a lot easier for myself by cutting an extra 15 millimeters off each piece of trim and then offsetting each piece to one side. As such, I could do finer trimming work on the pieces once they were attached by lying the door upside down and chiseling off any overhang. As far as I can tell, no other method allows for further trimming of all the pieces once they're already attached to the door. Well, that was worth it. We went to, we let those dry overnight, um, and we, we went to prime it today, but then we realised we'd forgot to put filler in, uh, so we've just put some filler in to fill in the little gaps. Um, and that will take overnight to dry, apparently. I've never used the stuff myself before. Um, but yeah, we'll be back in a bit and show you how things are going.
So despite being quite an arty and crafty guy, um, painting has never really been my thing. Uh, and as such, I don't have any painting clothes, which is why I'm wearing this thing. Because it is prepping time for that stuff that we put on the preps it. Prepping time. <laughs> <laughs> Prepping time. Do you know what music I should put in these spell up segments? I can't really think of anything. Well, definitely not one of those terrible songs you write. Oh, thanks. So, it's another day. This has dried overnight. Um, it looks pretty good, so now we're going to stick some green on it. We only have the one green at the moment, uh, because the inside and the outside are going to be different colours. We only have the darker green, so today we'll be doing the inside. So that'll be the back of the cabinet itself, the shelves, the fronts of the shelves, all the way round, down and on the inside. Um, but say the top piece up here and the side pieces here will still... Those will be the, um, the lighter green. Um, so we still have a fair bit of work to get on with now, so let's do it. We have discovered a slight problem with the painting. Um, not only do I have a really small brush, which means I'm going to work a lot s more slower than Lani, but the paint of tin we got was reduced to clear to four pounds instead of, what should it have been? 12? 16? 22. 22? Huh. Well, it was reduced to clear because it's only half full. So I don't know how much we're going to be able to do, um, but we'll have time to think about it because this stuff takes a lot longer to dry than the white stuff. Um, you know, it's each, each coat's probably going to need to dry overnight, so that's something we'll have to deal with. That'd be fun. Do you have any constructive ideas? Uh, how about a long, awkward silence? Um... Brand new day. We've just been shopping, bought some prime paint, bought some pork pies, and we're in a plastic poncho. Let's do it! Ooh, what about some Klingon opera? Ugh. Why are there always police outside of our house? It's not me, I promise. So, um, Her Majesty is painting the doors down there, looking very nice. That's the, the new green. I realised I didn't frame it well so you could see the sides, but I obviously, you saw I had a roller. And that is terrible lighting. Like you can barely tell that those are different colours. Um, well, at this close can. Obviously, this side was this colour. Um, but... Yeah, um, I've never used a paint roller before, so I'm uh, waiting for Lonnie's opinion because she's the smart one. Also, what is going to be painted is the top bit here, uh, which is still white and a couple of smudges of the, the dark green on there, but hopefully the, the light stuff will cover that over. The trimming on the sides, the front, the top of this, the, the end of this shelf, because this is going to be vis you know, the, the top of the cabinet doors will come up to here, so that will be the same colour as the doors, which is why we've left that one. Um, the sides here, and the baseboard down there, so that we have a fully um, light green front, fully light green sides, and a fully light green top. Um, oh, I can't, I couldn't see that angle without this, uh, so there's a bit more that needs doing there, so I will get right onto that. Now, okay, should I stop the video? I'm going to stop the video. So once everything had been painted, uh, we had to put the resin on the doors. Now, resin is really not my craft, so I'm going to hand over to Lani for this bit, because she did that, and she's going to explain how it worked, because chemicals and maths and I don't know. Lani, is there maths involved in resin? A little bit. A little bit. Well, she knows more about maths than I do. So, over to her. First, I took some paint in various greens and whites and some mixed colours 
and using a sponge, sponge them onto the door so that I could create some depth before the resin pour. Just so that if, when there were parts of the, of the resin that were translucent, you could still see through and it sort of pushed a perspective. The trim that we put on was glued on very, very securely and then painted over, which meant that the space between the trim and the door itself was really very, very secure. So I didn't have to worry about sealing the doors or doing any extra steps there, which saved a lot of time and a lot of tape. I've been doing resin for about a year, just over a year, I think. I sort of started off with some cheap resin. The more I did it, the more I kind of fell in love with it. And something that I really, really love about resin is how easy it is to try and recreate the, the natural world. It's a fun challenge to try and create marble or granite and to have a discernible difference between your faux marble and your faux granite. Trying to create ocean scenes and make them as realistic as possible. While resin does often have a very glassy texture, it's been really fun to try different things and to try different textures and different ways to create a more sensory experience from the art that I make. It was a little bit frustrating at times. The technique that I'm using here is called a dirty pour and it involves mixing a number of colours and then pouring them out onto your surface which often gives very very different vibes. You can use exactly the same ingredients and materials and exactly the same process and get two wildly differing end results which is what happened with, with this project. Different lighting, different angle, different t-shirt yeah, editing is a weird process. Anyway, if you'd like to know more about Lonnie's resin process, our next episode is going to be a discussion between her and I about how she does resin. Um, and we're going to go into a lot more detail than she did just then. But for this video, let's get on with it and let's have a look at the real thing, shall we? This is the finished thing. I apologise for the strange angle, but... Uh, I only have phones to film on, so give me a second and I'll join you down there. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Bertie. Nice to meet you. So, what's next for Bertie? What's next for Bertie? Well, that's a very good question. Um, after this, I think I'm going to go back to playing around with that slinky that I found about a month ago. Ah, that's a long-term project. That's, that's a very long-term project, yeah. Oh. But for now, let's talk about this, shall we? Yeah. This has taken us, what, a month? Mm. The project itself was done in about a week. Just over a week. However, this bookcase has been sitting around the house. It has. For yeah. a really the, long the, time. The, the dates don't really um, compensate for procrastination. Oh, there was so much procrastination. Yes. But once we actually thought, let's just sort of do it, we sort of did it. Mm. And we had the whole thing painted in three, four days? Yeah, three days. Three days, three days. Um, something we didn't make abundantly clear in the videos is obviously every layer got a second coat. So there were two coats of the primer, two coats of the light green, two coats of the dark green. There was only one coat of varnish though, wasn't there? Yeah. Yeah, but that, that was more than enough. Also, I really, I don't like, I don't like the varnish. You don't like I'm just going to say it, I don't like the gloss. Yeah, well, we did want a matte varnish, but we couldn't really find one. Um, and while the bookcase looked amazing without the varnish, it, it wouldn't have lasted long. Am I able to you know, scratches and scuffs and cat-related incidents. We have somewhat proved it against cat-related incidents with these doors. Um, we put the new handles on, obviously, we put the resin in. Um, something I noticed when we first bought it was that the frame was slightly warped and that the doors were wonky. Um, but then we took the doors off to initially try sanding it, which didn't work. Mm. Then we did all the painting and everything. Um, but in the meantime, I'd forgotten 
the, the frame was warped. So I put it back on, overexcited, and of course the doors are wonky. Um, that is something that could be fixed with either uh, spacing material or new hinges altogether. That's something that I will fix in the future, but for now it's functional. We've managed to get our books out of the wardrobe. And the Christmas tree is back in the wardrobe. It's what? May. <laughs> back in June. May. It's nearly June. <laughs> and we've just put. And we packed it away, to be fair. It was just standing in a box right here, and we had a lamp on top of it. Because we are responsible adults with real life adult furniture. I'm sitting on a chair made of cardboard. <laughs> As well as, as well as being a bookcase, we've put a, you know, a few display pieces on there. These masks, which are uh, papier mache that Lonnie made. Little big daddy over here, which uh, came from a loot crate, I believe. We have some wax melts. Are these YouTube appropriate? They don't have nipples. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they don't. They just have little points. Is that not? These very buxom men <laughs> um, are wax melts, which were which were made for me by uh, by a friend. And they smell amazing. And the longer they aren't melted, the stronger the smell gets. Yeah, and they just they're too they're too beautiful to to melt. So they live up there now. Mm. I can't put that back up. We'll have to go back up there later. <laughs> we have this this uh, folding arm lamp on top, sort of Pixar lamp, but on steroids because it's quite big. Um, we initially had a colour changing bulb in there with a remote control. You could change the brightness and it had a couple of effects and all that. It's taken a while um, and painting it was a bit of a nightmare because we had to lock the cat out of this room. Yeah, happy with it. Um, do you have any further remarks to say about it? Um, I don't think so. I probably will in like half an hour. It's a good thing I haven't edited this video yet. Yeah. Well, that's going to be about all from us so far, unless we find something else. Um, if you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you'd like to click off now then by all means go ahead. Um, I am going to indulge myself for a few minutes longer though and I'm going to talk about some of my favourite books on here. So if you want to stick around for that, you're absolutely welcome. If, if you've had enough of us for ever, it's going to be about half an hour this video I think. If you've had enough of us for however long this video turns out to be then thank you very much for joining us and we'll catch you later. But for real, please stick around. I put a lot of effort into this kit that comes after this, so thanks, love you. The first exhibit today is something very special. Here we have The Eagle of the Ninth Trilogy by Rosemary Sutcliffe. The first book in this trilogy tells the tale of the Roman Ninth Legion, marching north past Hadrian's Wall, never to return. And the quest of the Legion's Centurion's son to recover his father's Ninth Legion Eagle Totem. These particular editions come from the Folio Society, who create books with stunning designs, and each one comes in its own protective sleeve, which is rather handy. They are visual masterpieces, and while I've only read the first one so far, I am excited to get into the other two. Now, I'm not a religious man, But this is my scripture, one of the very few comedies ever created to stand the test of time but still be side-splittingly hilarious. This righteous tome contains the scripts of all four series of Blackadder, and while it isn't my favourite book, it's certainly one of my most treasured. This next book is actually three books. On the left, we have Jeremy Monday's second edition of Introducing Translation Studies, a textbook which, along with the help of J.C. Catford's A Linguistic Theory of Translation, helped me to write my master's dissertation, in which I compared the original English version and the German translation of Dr. Seuss's bestseller, The Cat in the Hat. Now, very long story, very short. 
The translation is excellent, even down to the meter and the rhythm of the text. I hold on to these more for sentimental reasons, not because academic textbooks are particularly riveting reads, but as far as academic textbooks on translation theory go, these two are stellar. Now, I cannot possibly talk about my favourite books without mentioning... Dune is a masterwork of science fiction from American author Frank Herbert, originally published in two parts in a magazine in 1965. Now, according to two sources I found online through the book's Wikipedia article, Dune is quite literally both the best-selling and the best science fiction novel of all time, and I believe it. Admittedly, some of the wording in Dune is very dense, and there are so many colloquialities of the language that it has its own glossary. As such, it took me several attempts to properly get into it, but once I did, oh, wow, that was a ride. Here's an overview of the plot, summarised purely by music and my reactions. this is going on, there are also multiple instances of <laughs> To put the summary in words, Space Boy gets angry when his space dad is killed by a space fat man, so he snorts a load of space cocaine and becomes space Jesus, then blackmails pretty much the entire universe. And there are big worms. But the subtlety of the writing is incredible. Political drama, subterfuge, indoctrination, racism, rampant unchecked capitalism, eugenics, god complexes, drinking your own pee, this has it all. If you haven't read this book, do yourself a favour and read it. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll catch you later. <laughs> Oh, I'm so grown up. <laughs>